Welcome to Whitby. These houses here is known as the Royal Crescent and one of them is where Bram Stoker stayed in the 1890s. I'm going to try to find it, it's number six. And here it is, number six. And apparently he stayed in the third floor, came up with his story of the vampire arriving on the shores of Whitby and bounding up the 199 steps, which we're going to see later on. And just along from that, we're going to head towards the whale bones. So they're the famous Whitby whale bones behind me. So back in the 18th and 19th century, Whitby's fishing fleet was famous. It used to go out into the Arctic, 45, 55 boats, and uh, they would be battling treacherous conditions, icebergs, capsizing but if any of them were successful and caught a whale they would head back into the port of Whitby with a whale bone attached to one of their masts. Thus the whale bones became famous. And these are actually the third set of whale bones. Um, these were donated by Alaskan Inuits. And over here Captain Cook. Let's have a look. Stanley, his first ever trip to Whitby, 12 weeks old. Stanley. We're going to walk down there and head into the town. But you can just about see the uh, 199 steps there leading to the Abbey in St. Mary's. So you can hear the seagulls, but don't feed them, otherwise, you might end up like that kid there in agony. Town centre now. Bandstand. The tour bus. Stanley attracting lots of attention. Yeah. And the lighthouse. So I'm going to head down to the lighthouse and see if I can climb up it. Apparently we are. £1.50 and then we can climb. Right, here we go. Made it. 80 or so steps. Down there with the hound. So this is the main thoroughfare with all the arcades and fish and chip shops. Whitby Fudge Bar. And the Magpie Fish and Chip Shop here is meant to be the best in Whitby, thus the queue already. Unfortunately, the uh, spiritualist and clairvoyant is closed today. You may have seen the rest, but that one's the best. And this is the Dracula experience. Um, four pounds to get in, but we haven't got the time, unfortunately. Whitby's full of pubs, the book in for a booking good night. So now we're just heading towards the swing bridge. It may even open at some point. Opened in the um, early 20th century. So Whitby is famous for its Whitby jet, the black stone. Here are all this. Found in cliffs and beaches around here. So we get some fish and chips. We've tried lots of different ones in Whitby but this is our favourite, Mr Chips. Here we are, fish and chips and the seagulls are here. So 
just down along this quaint street is the house that Captain Cook or Apprentice Cook resided in when he when he was in Whitby. It's now his museum. Let's have a look. So it opened in 1987. So it's £6.20 to go in and we haven't got time to go in, fortunately. But he resided in one of these attic rooms, did young James Cook, back when he lived in Whitby. And just across the harbour is a replica, a 40% size of the original Endeavour, the, the ship that Cook sailed to the Pacific on. Now it's a tour boat, it can fit 46 people on it. So this is now one of the prettiest little streets in Whitby. Look at the cobbles and the gabled fronts. And another shop showcasing Whitby Jet. This place behind is uh, Whitby's marketplace. Let's have a look at this. Look at it. Pretty. Like a postcard itself. And if you want to go on a ghost walk, Meet here at 8pm. Buy a postcard or some souvenirs. Dracula, obviously, with Bram Stoker link. And there's even the Museum of Whitby Jet, but what we're doing is we're heading to the um, 199 steps towards the Abbey. This is the start of the exercise. So these are the steps where the uh, Bram Stoker's vampire dog bounded up. Made it. St. Mary's. So Bram Stoker walked around here, looked at some of the, the tombstones, got some names for the characters in his book. So this is Cadman, I think that's how you pronounce it, his monument. He was an English poet um, in the year 657 AD. So yeah, St Mary's is a Norman church from I think the 12th century, very old. These greystones look really weathered, weather-beaten. Look at that. There's the 7th century Whitby Abbey behind me. Um, when the Vikings came, they ransacked it, almost destroyed it, and it lasted until Henry VIII's time with the dissolution of the monasteries, and that was it. It was left a rack and ruin. And I think even uh, World War II, we got a, World War One actually got shelled a little bit. But look at it, it looks pretty good. And what is this? So it says here, it is a bronze copy of a 17th century statue of a Roman gladiator. So we're heading back down to our final stop, which is a famous kipper shop. So here it is. Uh, six generations have lived here since 1872, or rather worked here, but unfortunately it closes at 3 p.m. and it's 3.15. That's where we could have seen the kippers being smoked. You can actually smell them actually. You see stuff dripping over the side. Kippers. Unfortunately out of sight. So as our final stop, we're going to take Stanley onto his first ever beach. Here he goes. So that is it. Goodbye from Whitby.